Aloha. I'm really hoping that today's session kind of opened up a couple doorways and the thought processes on how we see things. For one thing, if we're seeing our chords as being tangibly two different chords, a major and a minor, we can read our relative major for G major as being a E minor. Our F major can be a D minor. Our E flat major, so if we're doing a D major and go to an E flat major, it can be a C sharp minor. It'll be the relative meaning. All of the different notes that are inside of one are also inside of the other. So what we've been doing is we've been discussing how to take a simple concept of, let's say, a G major to an A minor to a B minor to a C. When we're playing a simple one, two, three, four progression, we can think about what the relative majors and minors are of these. We can also think about what inversions we're playing. Rather than just playing a G that goes directly to an A, then directly to a B and then back to a C, we can move that up and make it a higher octave interval for the C. The G major with the A minor, we could drop out just one of our notes from the A major, and or A minor, drop the notes down to get a A7, which these do work, but kind of feel weird. What would this be? We'd have what? A minor, A major. So it's this is the third, right? If we have this over the top, we have G, G sharp, A. So when we have any major and we move one of its notes down a half step, we get a major seven and then a dominant seven. So an A minor dominant seven is a really groovy note to put as a replacement note for any minor shape. So if you're doing a recording, not a recording, if you're doing a um, like a round where you have a G to an E minor, G to an E minor, you can also see this as having that open D string would serve wonderfully as the dominant seventh on the E minor. So open it up. Yeah. What are we doing here? Yeah, we'd have this note, this note, and this note. Listen to how full and awesome that sounds. And you'll be surprised that when we try and for fingering alterations, you can only be right or wrong, really, in one half step. So if you're playing a G major and you move your finger forward, Eh, not bueno. But if you move forward a whole step, yeah, bueno. So what we tend to figure out, like Miles Davis said, we're only a half step off from the right note. Right note. So what I'd encourage you to do, write a three or a four chord progression. If we're in the key of F, it would be something like... F major, C minor, G minor. When we're playing the F... We can also play all the notes that are inside D minor because it's a relative major and a relative minor. Uh, when we play the C minor, we can play all the notes and all the chords that are in E flat major. So if you know how to play a D, then you know how to play an E flat major. All the notes inside of C minor are all the notes inside of E flat major. And then all the notes inside of G minor are all the notes inside of B flat major. So what we do is we find that our relative chords look a lot like our G major and C major. G sharp major, C sharp major, so on and so forth over and over again. I hope this concept really helped. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. Write a two or three chord progression. We'll go over that. We'll alter the chords next week, and then we'll see if we can come up with some sort of cool melody. Or write one if you can. Anywho, it was great seeing you, and I'll see you next week. Aloha.